finishing up these last three sections in unit four, um, we're looking at rational functions. And if we think about the word rational, the first part of that word is a ratio. So we're looking at functions that are fractions, basically. And the definition of a rational function is p of x over q of x, where these p and q functions are both polynomials. So p and q are polynomials. And if we recall, um, we've, we've talked about the domain of functions and basically we look for restrictions. And in a rational function, we are gonna look for restrictions where the denominator is zero. So remember, um, x cannot equal 0 if it's on the denominator. So if I have this function where f of x equals 1 over x, the domain of this function is going to be um, all x except for x cannot equal 0. Right? So if we are looking for um, domain restrictions, basically we have to look at where the denominators can equal zero. The numerators can be anything in this case, but the denominators cannot equal zero. So most of the time we're going to need to factor our denominators. So here we have the difference of squares. I know I have x plus two and x minus two. And here for my domain, I can have all values for x except for x cannot equal plus and minus two. Okay, it can be anything else but positive and negative two. Okay, so again, we're looking for the denominator cannot equal zero. In part B, um, nothing to factor here, but I know that x cannot equal negative three, or that would make the denominator zero. So my domain would be for all x, x cannot equal negative three. And if I look at this one, um, back in the last couple sections, we were um, factoring and solving, and we were looking at this as being, um, if I set this equal to zero, I would have an i, x squared equals negative one, so x is plus and minus i, um, but since we're looking at the domain as being over the set of real numbers, The imaginary numbers aren't included in a part of our domain, so in this one, our domain is going to be all real numbers. All right, so um, here it says in example two to analyze the function. Um, and this is a function, this is one over x squared. And I know here that for my domain, I have all x and x cannot equal zero. And this is an even function. And if we remember, even is symmetric, or we have symmetry over the x-axis. So if I were to look at a graph of this, um, 1 over x squared. Um, we haven't really done anything like this before, but if I were to make a quick table 
of x and y values. So let's say I take um, negative 2. If I plug in negative 2 here, I get positive 4 on the bottom, so this is positive 1 fourth. If I plug in negative 1, I get 1 over 1, which is 1. And if I pu plug in, um, let's do something smaller, because I know I can't plug in 0. How about a negative 1 half? If I plug in negative 1 half, that squared would be 1 fourth. And 1 over 1 fourth is 4. So if I plot these points, um, going up like this, I go over to negative one or negative two, up one fourth, negative one one, and negative one half, positive four. That's way up here. So my graph is looking something like this. And if I pick smaller numbers closer to zero, I know I can't pick zero, but if I picked um, negative one fourth, I would get 16. So I would keep getting closer and closer to zero. And here, if I keep getting bigger numbers, I'm gonna get closer and closer to my x-axis, uh, All right? So how about if I pick some positive numbers, like positive two? So I have two squared is four, so this would be one-fourth. Um, positive 1, 1 squared is 1, so this would be 1. And if I put in 1 half here, I would get positive 4. So because it's even, I know that I am reflecting over the x-axis. So over 2, up 1 fourth, over 1, up 1, over 1 half here. So I have this branch of the rational function as well. And we know that it cannot equal zero. So if we remember um, what this looks like is um, a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So vertical asymptote, and we're gonna talk a lot more about asymptotes in the next video, um, the second part of this lesson. Um, but it looks like we have an asymptote at x equals zero and y equals zero, because if I keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, um, I'm gonna keep getting closer to the x-axis. And if I were to even think about this in terms of an x-intercept, if I were to plug in zero for y, I have one over x squared. What one over what number would give me zero? And um, that is just not possible. So it's approaching the x and y axis on this. Okay, um, another just real quick um, graph that we have looked at before is f of x equals one over x. And if we remember um, that one over x in a rational function, we had, again, we cannot have a um, x equals zero, so there's an asymptote there. So we had a branch here, and then we had another one down here. Um, so here we had first and third quadrants. Over here, it looks like it's first and second quadrants. So we're going to do some simple transformations <clears throat> with these. And if I look here, I know that x cannot equal 2. And so that's going to be my vertical asymptote. So I'm going to move that vertical asymptote over two units to the right. Okay, so just a quick sketch. Two units to the right. Now I'll have that vertical asymptote. 
and I'm going to go up one unit for my horizontal asymptote. So, so now we're not looking at the axes for our asymptotes. We're looking at the vertical line at x equal 2 and the horizontal line at um, y is 1. So now I'm just going to have my branches because it is 1 over x squared and just a transformation of this parent function. I know I'm going to have branches in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So it's just going to kind of look like that. All right, so on part B, I will make another axis. Now, this one kind of looks like the 1 over x that we did here, except for the negative means I'm going to flip. So instead of the first and third quadrant, I'm going to go to the second and fourth quadrant. And I'm going to move this to the left one unit. So my vertical asymptote is going to go at negative 1. And like I said, the negative is a flip. And the plus 1 here is a, a sliding it over to the left one unit. And I'm looking at not the first and third quadrant, but the second and fourth quadrant. So I would draw in my branches that look something like this. And this is just, a, a, again, just a transformation of the main parent function that we sketched up above. All right, so in our lesson today, um, in the homework, we're just looking to find the domain of the functions and to sketch some power function, or uh, sketch some rational functions as transformations.